Hello, everyone. Have you ever dreamt of joining the ranks of the real estate millionaires? While the path may not be paved with gold, achieving this goal is certainly within reach. So today, we'll not only explore the possibility, but also equip you with the knowledge to make it a reality. Now let's dive into the world of rental properties. Acquiring real estate isn't a straight line. It's more like a thrilling treasure hunt. You'll embark on a journey of education and transforming from a complete beginner to a confident property owner with multiple properties. Now, while everyone's path is unique, a structured approach can help you. Okay, so step one, you're going to have to do some research. Think of it like laying down the foundation for your financial future. The more solid your research, the stronger your investment decisions will be. Now, here's how you become a research rock star. You need to devour market trends, okay? You need to immerse yourself into real estate market. You need to read industry publications, listen to podcasts, attend local seminars. You just really need to understand what current trends are going on to equip yourself and make informed investment choices. Two, you want to seek the wisdom of experts, like connect with somebody that's an experienced investor in your area. They've been doing this for a while. They can help you. Network with real estate agents, with property managers, and successful landlords out there already. Learn from their experiences and gain valuable insights. Okay. Three, you want to know your numbers. Don't be afraid to get down and dirty with those finances. Crunch the numbers. Understand your mortgage rates, your rental income projections, and your potential maintenance costs. A solid financial understanding will protect your investment. Now, understanding mortgages is also a big deal in making money in real estate, so make sure you understand how to structure mortgages. Now, let's delve deeper into the location research. You want to find that perfect neighborhood or neighborhoods within your city. Best way is per capita income. Stability is the key. So you want to aim for areas with a per capita income exceeding $30,000. This often translates to reliable tenants with good credit scores and potentially allowing for higher rents. You need to understand your renters. Not all zip codes are created equal. In areas with per capita income below $30,000, You're going to have to focus on affordability and attracting tenants with stable employment. Remember, it's about building a sustainable income stream. Now, beyond the numbers, you will also need on-the-ground experience. So solid research really goes beyond statistics. You ideally want to familiarize yourself with the neighborhoods that you're looking into investing. So here's some tips. Get your boots on the ground. If possible, you want to visit the neighborhoods, observe the overall condition of the properties in that neighborhood, what, you know, how the vibe of the community and the ongoing development projects that are going on with the city in that community. Talk to the locals, strike up conversations with residents in the areas that you want to buy property. Talk to the shopkeepers and maybe even to other landlords. Gain valuable firsthand knowledge about the area's growth potential, and any potential concerns you may have. Now, remember, building a successful rental property portfolio takes time and effort. But with a solid research foundation, you'll be well on your way to becoming a real estate mastermind. Okay, step two, selecting your investment sweet spot. Location really does matter. So choosing the right neighborhood is key to your success. So let's explore some strategies for finding your investment sweet spot. So while venturing into other states can be tempting, consider starting locally. And here's why. Managing properties near your residence allows for easier inspections, repairs, and tenant interactions. Imagine the peace of mind knowing your investment is just a short drive away and not like 10 hours away. Starting locally capitalizes on your existing understanding of the area. You already have a sense of the neighborhoods, demographics, and potential rental rates. However, 
location shouldn't be confined to your immediate area if you live in a high-cost market like San Francisco, New York, or Chicago. Consider expanding your search radius. And remember, the goal is to find markets where the numbers work for your investment plan. Once you've identified a target market, it's time to become an expert. Analyze the rental vacancy rates and tenant demographics to really pinpoint where people prefer to live. You want to research property values, rental rates in different areas, just to understand those market trends. You also want to look at crime rates and neighborhood safety can impact tenant quality and property values. So you want to know what's going on with all that. So knowledge is power and building relationships with local real estate agents, lenders, property managers, and even other investors can provide invaluable insights, market trends, and even exclusive deals that you might get before somebody else. So here's a simplified framework to help you categorize neighborhoods for investment potential. You have Class A properties. Those are predominantly owner-occupied, meticulously maintained properties. While aesthetically pleasing, these areas might not be ideal for rentals as vacancy rates tend to be low. Then you got Class B. This is the sweet spot. It boasts a healthy mix of renters and homeowners. Look for neighborhoods with a 35%-65% renter ratio. These areas often provide a good balance of stable tenants and manageable property upkeep. And then you'll have your Class C properties, and these are neighborhoods that consist primarily of rentals and might show signs of neglect. While potentially affordable, high tenant turnover can lead to frequent vacancies and loss of income. My properties are a mix of Class B and Class C. Okay, step three, you want to secure capital and financing for your investment journey. So securing funding, here are some of your options for aspiring investors. You can do traditional lending. Pre-approval is going to be the key here. For your first deal, consider working with a bank or local lender. They typically require 20% down payment for rental properties. Unlocking lower down payments. If you buy a multi-unit property like a duplex, triplex, or fourplex and live in one unit for a year, you might qualify for a down payment as low as 3%. I did this on the first two rentals and it worked out great for me. The other thing you can do is government loan option. Veterans and qualified individuals may benefit from a VA or a USDA loans with potentially zero down payment requirements for the property. Finding funding partners for first-time investors, private money can be a viable option. This involves finding an investor who provides the capital in exchange for return on their investment. I've done this many times. You just have to know the fees and the interest are, is going to be high. So you just got to make sure you pay them back quickly. You, you want to shop around, talk to various local lenders to compare their loan programs and interest rates. Find the option that best suits your financial situation. And then you can partner for success. If you lack sufficient funds or high credit score, network with other real estate investors. You might find a partner who, you know, contributes the down payment in exchange for a share of the profits. Understanding your ongoing cost investing in rental property goes beyond the initial purchase. So here's some additional factors to consider. You need to factor in your regular mortgage payments when budgeting. You need ongoing operational expenses. Be prepared for property taxes, utilities, maintenance, and repairs, and other ongoing costs. So you want to look at rent versus cost and then the balancing act, like how to balance all that out. So you'll need to analyze your rental rates for your comparable properties in your target market to determine realistic income expectations. You can utilize calculations online to analyze key financial metrics like your cap rate and your cash on cash return. Now, while some suggest finding an investor before securing a property, 
it's often easier to attract an investor with a concrete deal already under contract. I would have some investors lined up who can do a deal quickly once I secure or you secure a property. You'll want to be realistic in your financial projections when you're discussing vacancy rates, maintenance costs, and other expenses. So basically, when you're talking to them, you want to under-promise, over-deliver. It's better to exceed expectations than fall short. Building trust with investors is crucial for long-term success. Remember, financing is a critical step in building your rental property empire. By exploring various options and understanding ongoing costs and presenting yourself as a knowledgeable and reliable investor, you'll be well positioned to secure the capital needed to fuel your real estate journey. Okay, step four, we're going to analyze for success. So we've covered research, location selection, and financing strategies. Now let's equip you with critical skill of analyzing those potential rental properties. So mastering the deal analysis equals developing a keen eye for analyzing deals is essential for building a successful rental property portfolio. Now here's how to hone your skills. You're going to have to do what everybody does. You're just going to have to practice because practice makes perfect. Start by analyzing multiple deals, even daily. The more deals you analyze, the more comfortable you'll become with identifying profitable opportunities. One key goal is to find properties priced below market value. This buying low strategy offers several benefits. You build equity faster strengthening your overall financial picture, and in unforeseen circumstances, you have room to negotiate a lower selling price while still making a profit. So let's discuss purchase price key performance indicators, KPIs, right? While price is important, a successful deal analysis goes beyond the initial investment. Here are some additional KPIs to consider. So you want to look at return on investment, or ROI. This metric measures the profitability of your investment. A minimum ROI of 15% is generally considered desirable. Here's the formula to calculate ROI. So you do ROI equals rent minus debt and expenses divided by investment. Rental income versus purchase price. This is a simple yet effective rule of thumb suggests monthly rent should be at least 1% of the purchase price. So an example is a $200,000 property should generate at least $2,000 per month in rent. Now remember, don't rush into the first deal that comes your way. Practice analyzing numerous properties, paying close attention to price, projected returns, and potential income. By honing your analytical skills, you'll be well equipped to identify and secure profitable investment properties. Step five is the targeted search, how to find your perfect property. While there's no single magic formula, successful investors utilize a combination of strategies to find lucrative opportunities. Here are some popular methods. First one, partnering with a realtor. A skilled real estate agent can be your guide in navigating the market. They can provide access to the multiple listing services, which is called MLS, And they have a vast database of properties for sale that they can send you. Additionally, they can utilize their network and expertise to unearth off-market deal properties not yet publicly listed. I use realtors all the time for off-market deals or to find homes that are bank-owned or foreclosed. You can also do number two, driving for dollars. Hitting the pavement, just literally just classic approach involves driving through neighborhoods with promising demographics looking for properties that might be for sale by owner or in need of renovation. Sometimes a fresh coat of paint and a well-placed for sale sign can be all it takes to attract a motivated seller. Third, the power of online ads. So the internet also offers a plethora of resources for real estate investors. Consider placing a targeted online ads expressing your interest in buying properties in specific areas. This proactive approach can put you directly in touch with motivated sellers. Okay, number four, reaching out directly. Don't underestimate the power of direct communication. You can send postcards or even text messages 
to landlords in your target neighborhoods, expressing your interest in purchasing rental properties. I literally get three to four texts a day asking to buy my properties. I also get phone calls and postcards almost every week asking to buy my rentals. Number five, competition is the name of the game, right? Finding deals requires dedication and hustle. Remember, other investors are also out there searching for profitable opportunities. Be prepared to act quickly when you find a property with potential. Six, beyond the tactics, you want to build relationships. While these methods are effective, building relationships within real estate community can be invaluable. Network with other investors and property managers and even local contractors. These connections can lead to exclusive property leads and valuable insights into the market. And the number six, making your move, crafting compelling offers. The art of the offer. In a competitive market, speed and strategic offers are crucial. So be prepared to face occasional rejections, part of the investment game. And remember, success often involves making multiple offers before landing the perfect property. Real estate investment is a numbers game. While you might only secure one deal out of every 10 or 20 offers, consistent effort increases your chances of finding profitable opportunity. So you don't want to be discouraged. You just got to keep trying and keep making offers. Remember, making offers is a crucial step in securing your investment property. Rejections might occur, but maintain a persistent approach and focus on crafting compelling offers that demonstrate your commitment and seriousness as a buyer. Okay, step seven, you want to do your due diligence, ensuring a smooth closing. Okay, so due diligence refers to the essential tasks you perform between signing the purchase agreement and closing on the property. This phase involves verifying various aspects of the deal to ensure a smooth and informed transaction. So the first step is to get an appraisal. Now, an appraisal by a qualified professional provides your lender with an unbiased estimate of the property's current market value. This cost typically ranges between $300 and $600. Now, you'll need to review the appraisal with your real estate agent, ensure the reported information accurately, and it reflects comparable properties in your area. Okay, a thorough home inspection by a qualified professional is going to be crucial. Your agent can usually recommend a reputable inspector to help you with that. I inspect all my homes before I purchase them. And sometimes, you know, I will go get inspectors, but they're not always great. So I like to go check my homes out myself. Always make your offer contingent on the home inspection. This allows you to uncover any potential issues that might discourage you from buying and major problems that might lead you to walk away entirely. If you can, you want to influence the offer, so the need for repairs could justify a lower price. You'll want the inspector to conduct a detailed visual examination of the property from the foundation and the roof to the plumbing, electrical, HVAC systems. They'll identify immediate concerns or urgent issues like mold or faulty wiring that may need immediate attention. Inspectors also look at future concern items like an aging roof, one that may need replaced in five years or something like that, or an inefficient furnace or a furnace that, you know, is having trouble turning on and might need repairs in the future. So you need to select a good title company. This company, they'll research the property's title. They'll ensure that there's no legal claims that could affect your ownership. You'll need to check if the property has tenants and confirm the rental agreements, including rental income and associated expenses. I personally manage my properties. You should do that too when you start. Once you get bigger in your cash flow and more, if you want to have a management company take over, you know, go ahead. You also need to get the right insurance coverage for your investment property. It's going to be critical. And then closing the deal. Once all the due diligence tasks are completed and addressed, you'll be ready for the closing. And this is pretty exciting, right? It involves signing the final documents, you know, wiring the down payment, and officially becoming the proud owner of your first rental property. 
So remember, due diligence is an essential safeguard that protects your investment. By thoroughly examining the property and its legal standing, you minimize your risk and you're going to ensure a smooth transition into rental property ownership. So you now have your first rental property. Just keep learning how to manage tenants. Pay off the property as soon as possible. We personally targeted 15-year loans on our property so we could pay them off quickly and cash flow quickly. And you just keep rinsing and repeating and doing the same number until you get the amount of rentals you want. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful. Give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe for more videos on wealth building and making money. And let us know your thoughts in the comments.